Hey, welcome to the garage. I realize it's been a while since I've uh, posted anything really significant to the site. We're getting more followers and more likes, and, and that's great uh, for you uh, Ducati enthusiasts out there and Husqvarna enthusiasts. Um, so I thought I'd do a bit of an update on my Ducati Scrambler. It's, uh, you know, I haven't done a lot of work on it lately, but it's been a little bit by little bit I've been fixing it up, and I thought I'd show it to you, and uh, you can contrast it to the other videos. Sorry if I look like I have a little bit of a droopy eye on that side. I got some allergy or something going on in there, but uh, yeah, let's look at the, let's take a look at the bike. Okay, there she is. That's my 2016 Ducati Scrambler Icon. Uh, it doesn't look a whole lot like it did when I first got it. Um, you can notice a couple of things right off that I've, I've already reported on a bit, but those that tall front fender looks more like the uh, Urban Enduro. It had the lower fender on there before, but I found in going off-road, especially with these uh, knobby tires, that uh, rocks would get caught up in there and stuff, and it, it really didn't keep the mud off and keep it from flinging around. And I complemented that with another one in the back. These are, I'm pretty sure, UFO fenders. They're actually made in Italy, unlike uh, many scramblers are not made in Italy. <laughs> this one actually is, though. And uh, so, again, it comes out farther so that it keeps the mud coming from coming off and going onto your back. I know a lot of guys, like they like the bobbed look and stuff, and that's great. Uh, but when you cut it off right here... As soon as you hit a little bit of water or mud, it's going to be all over your back. And I'm sure if you've got one like that, you can attest to that. Um, one of the first things I did uh, really to it was to take off that uh, catalytic converter. And I had one person tell me that, uh, you know, that was bad or that uh, I was uh, it was going to be really loud. But it's actually not all that loud. I had this silencer already that came off my old XR um, 400. And I put that on there. And that saved, gosh, I don't know, five, six, eight kilograms, um, like 16 pounds, 16, 20 pounds off the original. And uh, that made the bike lighter and uh, easier to perform because it's lighter, a little bit more throaty, a little louder, but not a whole lot. And if you're wondering what that piece is right there, it's because I run saddlebags because basically I'm using this for an adventure bike most of the time. I'm primarily an off-road guy. Um, you look over there, you can see my uh, Husqvarna and our other little dirt bike there. I'm an enduro guy, so I like to go off-road. So we've got the off-road tires. Um, those are Kenda Big Block and then an Anarchy Wild in the front. That's just what was available here. So, um, But I especially like that front tire, the, Anar the, um, the Anarchy. But the back tire, uh, the Big Block, it's a cheaper tire. That's actually a 170. So for you guys that are wondering, can I put a 170 on the back because the 180s are a lot harder to find? Yes, you can. It looks, it's, it's like a, a centimeter difference and you won't even notice it. See how big that looks? It looks just as big as the original. Um, and I'm waiting to, I've got another one to put on there. A little bit later, I like the look of this one better and I got a good deal on that. That's a Metzler, but it was on sale. So I just got it and hung it up in the garage for later. But yeah, I went for a ride off-road today, and even in the deep sand, uh, it performs really well. It doesn't dig in. The original Pirellis are nice tires um, if you're on an off-road. But if you've ever ridden them in any kind of mud, I mean, even a, a little slick mud on a trail, then you notice right off that they just load up and they are is no better than a slick. So going from the front here, um, some of the things that, that I did in the past, I've already talked about are put in the, uh, the shield on there that was just off Amazon um, I put this little uh, uh, kind of windscreen here and it helps a bit but honestly it just mostly deflects it into your face but it does help a bit on casual rides but you get up over 90 or 100 kilometers an hour and uh, yeah it, it, the wind really catches you and again for off-roading I've got the um, the bark busters on there these are a nice set here again I think I just got them off a Amazon and uh, like today, I was riding in the sand and I fell over and, you know, nothing got hurt. Nothing got uh, messed with at all because those bark busters and it protects your hands as well. And then the bars are the original stock bars. When I got it, they had some 
lower res resomo or resomo, whatever they are, bars on there. And I didn't actually like those. They were too low because I like to stand up. And to that, even with the old bars beforehand, I added these about one inch risers here that I made myself. And uh, they're just basically aluminum bar stock with a hole drilled in them. And uh, they fit right on there and they're super solid and they work great. A lot of people ask me why I make stuff myself. It's because I like to. And honestly, I'm on a budget. I don't have a lot of money. My wife and I live overseas. We live in the nation of Georgia. We're volunteers here. So the things that I do, I try to do myself. Like I made the rear rack. You can see it doesn't look perfect. But you know what? It's just a little paint's worn off a bit. But it works really good. And then for just looking at the rack for those off-road days, long trips, that is a... Uh, gas tank mount and for this little gas tank up here it gives me an extra five liters and I can if you know that the uh, the Ducati doesn't go that far um, on a tank of gas but with an extra five liters I can go a long way then as well if I need it I've got a uh, basically a gas bag um, that you can uh, fill up from giant loop and that gives it about another four or five liters as well if you need it and as you can see I've got my off-road helmet and I got my street helmet, and I got my adventure helmet. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to be ready for everything. And uh, just while we're back here, we got these uh, bullet singles, uh, signals I put on. They're aluminum cast, aluminum, very strong. Um, I had some cheaper ones, if you watch one of my first videos on there, um, but they didn't last long, they broke. And these are nice and bright. And uh, I can show you real quick. They flash real well and there. yeah uh, some of the other things uh, one of the biggest improvements you can make and you're going to enjoy a lot is just going to change the way the bike is is suspension change these are Andriani uh, fork inserts they're not just tops these go all the way through, have to rebuild the forks, and it helps it to ride much better. It's got dampening uh, adjustments on there and also preload adjustments. So you can make them a little stiffer, a little softer, depending upon uh, the kind of riding you're doing and also the response of them uh, through the dampening and things can be adjusted. And then also on the back, I've got an Olin shock on there. There were a few shocks available, but the Olin seemed like has the best reputation. It's adjustable with a preload here, and then also it's got the dampening control down in there. And, uh, wow, that makes such a difference. I don't know why Ducati would build a motorcycle, put so much technology into it, and then put a $3 shock on the back. And that's really what it felt like. I'd be driving down the road and hit a big pothole, and I felt like all my vertebrae separated and came back together again. So that is one of the... That's a little bit expensive. That, that was an investment there to put those in. But I, I rebuilt the shocks. I mean the front forks myself you can do it i've got a video on that check it out it can be done at home it's a little difficult a little tricky but as you can see i just have a lot of hand tools a small vise a little welder a small drill press i got lots of tools i used to be a mechanic these are left over from there but you know you collect tools as you go and sometimes you have to even make a tool or two and uh yeah so i i showed the uh uh, the protection bars that I made here and they don't fit like the normal ones There's no mounts on the engine or anything like that, which would actually weaken it, but they go right into these pieces on The frame and these actually just sit right in there and then it tightens up and it sets there They're not bolted in either and this is all one piece if I take the bolts off both sides It'll pop right off of there and then my skid plate that I made It's very thick aluminum you can see I know this looks a little ratty in here. This is my uh, muffler wrap that I put on it. And it's gotten a little old. It starts to lose the color. And I've uh, before I put on the uh, the skid plate, I hit, hit a few bumps with it. And that's one of the reasons I put it on there because it tore it and actually pulled my muffler off. And with this, the way it is, um, it actually sticks out. You can see past the edge of the muffler, the header. So it totally protects it. And, uh, yeah, again, you can spend a lot of money on that, or you can buy some sheet aluminum like I did. And you can, I've done a video on that if you want to see how I did it. Um, bend it and bolted it right to there, and they made a mount 
for the, on the back here, the mount is from the old uh, catalytic converter. And then a rubber, even a rubber uh, uh, pad in between the engine and this, just made out of a car tire, an old truck tire. And uh, it works really good. Sorry, the bike's not as clean, as shiny as it can be, but I actually use this bike a lot. And I mostly rinse it off. I don't spend a lot of time polishing it. I spend a lot of time uh, riding it and enjoying it. And, uh, oh, what else have I done? Um, another thing you notice if you come up on it is I've got the uh, um, Moto Wolf uh, phone mount. So this phone I'm actually holding in my hand right now fits right in there. Uh, and it'll adjust bigger, smaller. That way you have your navigation there, your communications there. And then right underneath it, I have uh, just a simple uh, USB uh, charger. And that way it keeps the phone charged. You can also use it for uh, plugging in like a, a, a pump for your tires, which I have. It's really convenient. Um, and it goes directly to the battery with uh, just a fuse in between. Another feature I, I noted before is these uh, foot pegs. The original foot pegs are like this. And they actually hurt your feet if you stand up much going off road. But these are made by Ketabo. And they're very economical. They're aluminum. And you get a good, big, solid place to stand. And they fit right into your original uh, mounts there. And wow, that's one of the most comfortable things you can change on your bike is putting that on there. Uh, you're, you're not going to regret that at all. Uh, people, you know, sometimes they'll ask about all the changes. Have I done any uh, performance changes on the engine? No, I have not touched the engine. This is for uh, on-road, off-road, scrambler, adventure type bike. They're fairly light and they've got tons of power. 75 horsepower. I mean, some people say, oh yeah, but this other bike has more. Yeah, well, it does, but for a bike of this size, 75 horsepower is plenty. You really don't need to mess with the engine. Um, it works good. It runs clean. Um, people have asked me if I uh, remapped it for this uh, ex for the different exhaust. No, I didn't. You can buy a really expensive exhaust system for these. But the funny thing is the headers, even if they might go a different direction, they really don't change much. So to spend $1,500, $2,000 on... A header system and then an exhaust is just well it seems kind of like a big waste of money to me because the original headers are stainless and they're very nice they perform very well um, again the muffler wrap keeps it cool when you're sitting on it at a long stoplight or in the summertime it makes such a difference uh, even helps to maybe quiet it a little bit and then a good uh, quality uh, you know uh, silencer on there and you're set uh, you can and you don't have to buy one made just for the scrambler because if you buy one made for Ducati It's going to cost you twice as much just find one that has uh, A header about the same size and then modify it to fit you can see it's just mounted on where the uh, Where the muffler was at before and it fit right on there. It's this is actually a DG I <laughs> changed it a little bit it looks like a DS now for a Ducati Ducati scrambler. Yeah, and uh, well yeah, I'm trying to think. Oh, you might notice the tank's a little different. This year didn't even come with a black tank. And you notice these are not side panels that are removable. This tank has been totally redone and form-fitted and repainted. I didn't do it. It was done before I bought it. Uh, maybe they smashed it. Uh, I don't know. Well, that was a quick update on just uh, any mods I've done since last time. And just uh, I've been out riding it a lot. It performs really well, especially off-road off with those uh, suspension changes. You're going to notice such a difference. I can bounce over things that before would totally bottom out. I still bottom it out sometimes. It's not the uh, desert sled. And it's not like a, like a Tenere, Yamaha or something like that. But for trail riding going off-road, I, I find it a great bike and I totally enjoy it and with the lightness of it the power it's got and uh, and the on-road characteristics as well and the low seat height uh, just don't see how you can go wrong with the Ducati, Ducati Scrambler especially if you've got one I mean hey have, have a good time modify it that's what I do and uh, yeah make it your own okay God bless and uh, have a great day